record video and now I'm in Discord. Okay, so if you want to start your stream up, Andy, and um, start my stream up. I'm you, sorry. And any, if anybody wants, I, I can turn my camera off or on your cameras. Back well, what are we doing here? I thought you were driving. Am I driving? Yeah, it's up to you. I thought you could drive and we could make a repo on your GitHub and do it kind of from start oh. to scratch with your Ubuntu and everything. Uh, okay. I will try. And that um, way I can answer questions. So yeah, uh, it's a, I mean, I'll just record. Like what I'm doing, Andy, is I'm just, I'm just recording this whole session here. Everybody might have to go on mute. Everybody yeah, might have to go on mute. Got an open mic. Got, a, got an open mic. Got a... That's chai cheese, but I don't That's know how to mute chai cheese. All right. All right. I guess he dropped. Okay, so now. All right, watch so it. let's see. There we go. So where you're gonna go is to go to GitHub first, Andy, and we're gonna make. Um, yeah, this will be this. There's a couple ways we can do this, but go to your GitHub repo, repo and let's make your GitHub repo and let's make the repo. Hold on, I gotta mute. Oh, there he goes. All right, so we're gonna go to GitHub. It's on in. All right, man. Okay, so make go to your repositories, and we're going to make a new repository. Go to my repository, sure. So there should be a right at the. Um, <laughs> there we go. So now, click on uh, new, top green corner. New. And call it, I don't know, call it routing mind map with mind map. scores or something, or just mind map, whatever you like. Routing mind map, sweet. And then just to initialize it, um, add a README file. That's all you need to do there at the bottom. And if you want to make a description here, of, right? um, you know, it's all about the journey or whatever, Discord session or whatever, repo to go with the Discord session. And then everybody watching this, in theory, we are going to be using the DevNet sandbox always on Nexus 9K. So you always have the router there to use. And uh, so then click create repository, Andy, and then Oops. let's clone it into your VS code. So click on the green code button in the top. So right there's there. nothing in there yet, is there? Why are we cloning it? Well, we're going to clone it so you can work on it in your VS code locally. Oh, and then and then we'll push our push artifacts back up. I got back you. Up. Yeah. Okay. So click on the green code button and oh, here. click on the little copy button there, and then we're going to drop back into VS code. Yes. VS code. And um, so now in the bottom left corner, there should be a little gear. Where's your menu? Shit. Oh, it's in the bottom right on your screen. Sorry, you, you have it over there. Yeah. So the little gear box. Uh, hold um, on. I think I just disconnected from my. Uh... Oh, your terminal? No, no, that's okay. So command okay. palette and then git clone. And it should give you a git. Yeah, we want to clone it and then paste in the link. And, um, you know, put a, if you have a repositories folder or something like that, or, you know. That's what I was trying to check and then I just kicked myself out. So we get you, repos you, you be a logical again. place to. It, it, it's still, yeah, get repos would be a, a, the perfect place. Yep. That makes sense. Okay. Correct. Yep. That's a great spot. And enter. Okay, so now, like... can you um, right-click on VS Code? Yeah, I said open there. I'm sorry, hit open, and that'll open up that new repository that we have. And then if you right-click on VS Code, oh, what's this? Yep. Yeah, so I got this your... connected. Hold on. Oh, okay. Reconnecting to my uh... in your terminal. And this is just do the I new trust VS the Code. author? Yeah, that's. <laughs> Yeah, I, I trust ask. you, John. I know it. Well, you're the author. It's asking if you trust <laughs> I, yourself. Well, yeah. I don't. I trust you. I trust myself. <laughs> okay, so um, we're inside that repo, and you can see we're in the main branch. So if you want to right click on VS Code, um, down in the uh, yeah, right down click here? and launch another VS Code. So say new window or VS Code at the bottom there, new and window. then head back into huh. GitHub. And just to make our lives easier, we're going to copy and paste a whole bunch of code. Not a whole bunch of code. We're, we're going to copy and paste some stuff. Um, Why did I I'm, open a second? Because you're going, to clone, you're going to clone my repo now. And that way we can have the code side by side, Andy, just to copy some stuff in and out. 
Ah, so if you gotcha. go to um, github.com, then it's slash automate your network, all one word, after the github.com. <laughs> actually, it's so right there. Your... <clears throat> I just starred you. You can actually click on me right there. It'll take you to my repository. See, uh, see oh, at the top right of here? the activity, Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. me. That'll yeah, take yeah. you there. There you go. So you starred me, and then you show up. I, your stuff shows up in my repo, right? Well, I started, I started to follow you, and I'll get updates oh. when you make repositories and things of that nature. So click okay. on mind map. And, and let's just, what we're going to do is clone it, and then we're going to read the readme, and I'll explain what's going on to everybody. But let's just go through the act of cloning. Okay. So, yeah. So just do the same thing. Now, Grab be careful that. not to clone it inside of the folder you just made. Like, clone this into your Git repos folder. So, yeah, you're going to do the little gear. Um, you might so I know this is going to sound stupid, but am I doing it in... VS Code, or am I doing it Correct. in VS Git, code. or it doesn't matter you're, because you're, they talk to each other, right? You're doing it. So, so Git comes integrated with VS Code. So, in theory, you could do Git command line, CLI commands, and clone the repo and push and pull. But VS Code integrates it where you can just clickety click and select okay. things like Git cloned. So they're not the same. It's it's like so in the bottom right corner, the little gearbox. Yeah. Command palette. And then git clone will actually be remembered. It should be your last command. Paste in my repo. Paste and then, that new one there. Is yep. that the right one? And Enter. then when it asks you, put it in the same um, you know, git repositories folder or wherever you want. It really doesn't matter. We're not modifying this code. So you can just put this in C temp or something like that. It doesn't matter. So I usually put it in a folder sitting on my server running Ubuntu. This is actually pulling from my PC I'm sitting on now. Yeah, it, uh, and again, you, like, you're, you're just cloning this to have the repository so us to look at the code. So just go to like your temp folder or make a C temp. Okay. It doesn't matter. Just clone it and dump so it, it wherever. It doesn't have to be in It doesn't have to be in Ubuntu. Linux. We're not going to run this uh, code. We're just going to be stealing from the code. Um, okay. We're not going to reinvent the wheel. Yeah, just drop it on your desktop. There you go. Cool. And then open that folder. And then, okay. Yeah. So then let's go back to uh, GitHub and let's just go over the README file here. And this is when we're going to start to get Ubuntu involved. So scroll down and um, getting started. If you just scroll down here. So installation for Ubuntu. Did you so, make this, by the way? This is very some, pretty. Some, so I made a very crude version of it and I wish I knew the name. <laughs> I, I, so many people interact with me. Someone from the community actually polished it up and made this wonderful logo for it's me. It's really nice. So, yeah, it is. Uh, I, I got that from, I don't know, someone in another community said, you don't you don't really have an open source project until you have a logo. Nobody takes you seriously. Until, <laughs> so I start like I start from the logo and work backwards. <laughs> um, okay, so let's make a virtual environment over in your new, um, so not my window, but your other VS Code window where your terminal is. Yeah. The first yeah. one we started. Yeah, so let's make okay. a Python virtual environment. Uh, uh, so the directions in here on how to do there, that? Yeah, right there at the top. Okay. So just literally copy and paste line by line. You should be able to. I think I already have a virtual environment. Well, let's, do let's, I have make, to create one? let's just make a new one. And instead of calling okay. it, you know, VENV, call it, or instead of ENV, call it mind map or something, you know, something obvious. So, okay. I, re I remember doing this with Eric Cho. He was helping us out a little bit with Python. So this is this going to destroy anything we created with him or is this a different environment? So I, let's give it a different name. Don't don't take ENV because so, I don't know what your environment that you may have okay. made in the past is. And yes, you could. So that's the name. Right. So you're going to copy ENV, that okay. and then just call it, um, you know, mind, mind map? map. I don't know. Yeah, mind map is a good name. And then we're going to activate right. that virtual environment. So that's the next line of code. But for your, you're going to say source mind map bin activate. Right. And then the prompt should change as, a, as an indication that it's successful. And you can actually tab it out. So if you tab, you know, bi tab and then slash acta tab. You won't get a big it fan of the tab. Yeah, All right. Too. Tab, tab, so tab, answer tab. there. So now you see the brackets in front. We're inside of the virtual environment now. 
So now you can skip the next step uh, because you're already inside okay. of a Git repo. So gotcha. then, um, and and we're not even going to install. So just do pip install pi ats full. That's all we're going to do for now. We're not even going to do the other steps. We don't need the other steps because it's a VS Code extension now. The, the other steps are if you want the CLI command line utility to convert a markdown to an HTML, which, which is handy. I do it in my open source project, but we're not going to need to do that today. And I'll show you why later on. So you have to install, is PyATS like a package? So yeah, so like great that? question. So in your Google, open up a new tab and just Google PyATS. This is, let's take a minute here. This is the foundation for all of my open source work when I'm dealing with Cisco command line interfaces. Actually, go back. Don't don't go to the oh, PyATS package. That's okay. Go to the... Um, yeah. uh, can, oh, you're a duck, duck review. Though. No, we don't want any of these. We want like the Cisco... Can you just hit Google for a second? Sorry. I, yeah, I, yeah. I'm not going to be able okay. to find the, um, the appropriate link. All good. PyATS, right? Just PyATS. And what we're looking for is the... Um, that one there, accelerating your DevOps with the second link down, that one, correct. Now, for anyone at home, do the same thing and explore this. But but if you scroll down, this is sort of the framework. So, so what we're going to use, Andy, is PyTS on the left, if you scroll down just a bit more. We're going to use that framework, which is a Python framework that will let us, and you'll see in a second, connect to devices, issue commands on devices, do different things. And then that genie in the middle is the development kit where I say, let's parse the routing table, what we're going to do today. So the framework lets me call a parser and the parser lets me parse either something abstract like BGP or routing or spanning tree. And it will run a bunch of show commands and give me back JSON or show commands like show IP interface brief and give me the JSON version of that command back. So then what we cool. do is take that JSON and make a markdown file out of it. And then that might sound simple, but it really, you're gonna see it's pretty simple to do. So let's install that. And then what we need, Andy, is what's called a testbed file. So we're gonna make a testbed file for the open sandbox that I talked about, that Nexus 9K. And it's ready to go. So open up the testbed folder in mine and actually make a new folder in your repo called, so um, inside of mind map in your folder structure in the left. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. See how there's a little green mind map folder with an arrow beside it? Expand Over here. that. Yeah, expand yeah, yeah. mind map. And right, that's your virtual environment. Okay, so, so collapse that. And what you're going to do is make, just make a folder here. Um, okay, so I see I what's happened. We've made the, the virtual environment, first. we've made the virtual environment inside of the uh, Git repo. Usually I would do that the other way. Let's, um, okay, and you're getting- This is why I wanted you to drive. Yeah, no, 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 <laughs> we're fine here, we're fine here. We're just not gonna be able to, when we, when we do our Git push, see how there's like 480 files there? It, it's all tracking the virtual environment in Git. So, and and why did we get some, we got some red errors here, invalid command. I'm just hoping PyETS installed. I, I see a lot of red there. <laughs> That's usually not good. Um, <laughs> huh. Uh, I don't understand the errors. That's okay. That's okay. Hit control to... C here, Andy. Do you mind? And um, let, let's just... It has too many active channels. Yeah, yeah, hit OK. I, I figured that I, I made a mistake in our order of operations here. So let's um, let's kill this terminal. And what we're going to do is is clone that repo inside of the uh, and then work inside of the repo. Yeah, we picked up a. Okay, let me let me uh, let me share my screen, Andy. Yeah, you won't hurt my feelings if at any point you want to drive and. Well, I. I, I think I know it's would, painful I, trying to watch me here. No, it's not that. It's just that the and let me turn my camera off because my um. Do I need to stop? I guess. Yeah, stop yours. And if people okay, want to join sorry. my my stream, gotcha. and, uh, okay, I'm and still then recording. I so I, I'm just a little scared about the um. 
a little can everyone see my screen can you see what's going on on my screen here yep all right all right and uh, let me go find your repo i just um I just have to find your repo, and I'll, what I'll do is you'll, you'll get a pull request from me. This will be this will be just as effective. Don't worry, everybody. And let me find Andy's repo. So I'm going to clone Andy's routing mind map repo here, or fork it as it's known, right? So what I'm going to do is is uh, fork this repo, which means to, and I'm going to fork it. Where should we fork it to automate your network? And then it will be under my repo here. And what I'm going to do is copy and. Hey, we're not we're not seeing your your screen. We're just seeing your Discord. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me try that again. Screens. Sorry. Thank you for bringing that up. Is that better? Oh yeah, much better now. Okay, I apologize. So, so I meant, let me back up a step here. What I what I've done, everyone, is gone into the repo, the the GitHub repo that Andy's made, and you can see up here there's a fork, which means I'm going to take it and put it into my GitHub repo. Now I have a version of it. See how it says fork from Andy's. So now I'm going to clone it, and let's go ahead and mind map that command. So let me close my existing folder. source let me activate my virtual environment and then I'm going to get clone Andy's repo so John did I create the virtual environment in the wrong place is that where I screwed it up no, I that was my mistake, Andy. I uh, um, I should have had you make the virtual environment and then clone the repository into it and then work inside of the repository. Um, what we had, the order of operations we did, we kind of made the Git repo and then instantiated a virtual environment, which means Git was picking up all of those files that Python was using. So. Where did that go? We called it routing mind map. So let me go into routing mind map. And hey, hey John, sorry, this is more of a production question. So you're you're breaking up a lot. It looks like we got a bandwidth issue. Will that will that be the evident in your Twitch stream? The recording will not have any of the lag, the local recording that I gotcha. upload. Um, but yeah, okay, cool. Okay, so now we're inside of that folder. Let me go back to the terminal. Okay, and let me um, source env bin activate. And I apologize for anybody who hasn't got to know me. I'm on an extremely poor um, DSL link for now. I, I hope to have that rectified in the new year. Okay, so Andy, what we're going to do is I'm going to open up this. And again, let's, um, let's do what I was kind of suggesting we do. And that is to copy in existing code. All right, so what I talked about was that testbed folder. So we're going to make a new folder called testbeds. And I'm just going to take and I'll explore it after. All right, so we have PyATS. And this is what a testbed looks like. And let me know when the lag settles down. But what it is is a YAML file that PyATS, the framework that we talked about, uses to connect to the device, right? So we have the protocol is SSH, the IP address, and, and the credentials used to connect. And then some like identifiers, the platform, the role, the operating system. Um, it's a router. It has an alias. Where did this YAML file come from? So, so is it the, within PyATS? No, you you have. They give you examples. You have to build a yeah, test okay. bed. So a test gotcha. bed 
Think of it as a test bed equals your topology. So if you had 100 devices, you would have 100 little snippets of YAML like this, each describing each of those 100 devices, their IP and their credentials. Um, and then when you run commands, um, this is how it connects. So let's take a look at one. So I hope this works. We're going to go to CD test beds. Now, PyATS has a command line interface, which is really handy because I can say PyATS learn routing. That's all I need to say. And then dash dash test bed dash file. And, and now I don't expect everyone to memorize this. You will memorize it if you start doing it this way. Um, and then our test bed file, which is called test bed always on YAML. Now it's going to connect and it's going to make three little files here. And hopefully it doesn't make me look foolish. Um, Did you say you're creating the test bed file right now? Just trying to see what my connection here is. Okay, no, look, see it's running. So, so I've actually connected to the device here. You see this file? This is the logging. So you can see that I've actually connected. Now the other file that we get, hey, it's done and it worked. So what we get is the actual console. So this ran the show IP route VRF all command. And we get the equivalent of the CLI output of that command. But that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is this, the JavaScript object notation of the routing table. And you can see that it has a test VRF, a default VRF, a management VRF, each with different address families, IPv4 or v6, routes, right? Like, is this not easier to consume just like this than this garbage at the CLI? Uh, that's a question I'm going to pose to the audience before we move on. Do you, do you not enjoy being able not to? Not for me. No? But, okay. Well, well I, mean, I, mean, there's, I, there's I no, no, no. I, I guess what my real answer is, I've been consuming it CLI for 10 years. So that's what my brain is used to. Right. So I'm still trying to get my mind around this new layout, which I know is all the rage and that's what we got to do. So, well, it's not so much it's all it's the rage. It's just not intuitive that, for me because it's, it's not what I've been looking at. Yeah, it's that it's structured and I can take this now and do basically right. anything I want with it, right? If if I wanted to run a right. PyETS test that said if route dot twelve 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 is not in this routing table, send an email or or send a syslog or do right. you know do things right? Take, yeah, the, take some action, right? Structured data is awesome. I'm just not used to it. And it was my job for a decade to structure that data in my mind. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so okay, that, so that's, that's what I mean by it. So this is not, again, I would agree with you, Andy, though, that this is not something that I would give to, to most people. You have to be able to read JavaScript. Right. And But let's make it business yeah. ready or operation consumable. Let's make a CSV file out of it. Let's right. make a mind map out of it, which is what we can do next. So let's save those files and let's start working on the actual mind mapping and and this command I just did. But because was... because I've been working on some automation, I, I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? I, right. I've I, I get the advantage of structured data and and you must learn it because it's awesome. Does, but, an, does anyone? Know, else... I don't want it to be lost that your traditional network engineer going to be like, oh my god, what is this? This is not CLI. True. Um, does anyone else hey, have any questions or points? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, please. So that was a was that a YAML file that you were running because it looked really it looked really similar to Ansible. The, oh, the the test bed file. Yes, yes, exactly. That is YAML, and that's yeah, the yeah, same. Yeah, this is the same format. Okay. A, um, a a playbook would be in an or a group var or yeah, YAML is kind of the 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 commonality between um, Ansible and PyETS. Now, the only file you're going to work with in YAML in PyETS is this YAML, is this testbed file. We're going to shift now to the Python. So how can I take this command and instead of giving me this in a file, can I stick it into a variable? 
right? Can I put it into memory and then do things with it from memory, um, pythonically? So that's, I'm gonna just save these files. We don't need these two files, but we're gonna keep this file around so when we get to the Jinja templating portion. But let me go ahead and um, call up my code here. Now, what do we need next? We need, um, right, the job file. Okay, okay, let me just copy this file over here. And mind map job, mind map job, testbed mind map. Hang on, let me, I'll, I'll explain in a second. I just want to replace what I need to replace here. All right, okay, so when you want to do like PyATS jobs, as opposed to just command lines, reusable code that something like Expresso or Docker or cron jobs, or if you just want to run your run it pythonically, they have two files. And one is kind of like the control file, which is which is just this job file. It's a little bit of Python. We don't really need to go over this file. But when we run it, again, you're gonna run PyATS run, and it will be this job file that we actually run to invoke the code. The code itself goes into a different file that we're just going to call mindmap.py. I'm not going to copy the whole thing. We're just going to make that file, mindmap.py, and we'll come back to that in a second. Let's grab our other things. Um, we're going to make a new file here. I'll come back to it and fill it in when the time comes. But you hear about object-oriented. And, and how Python is a great object-oriented language and reusing code and the dry principles do not repeat yourself. I don't have to do this because this is going to be a one-line command, but Andy, we're gonna do it this way in case you want to build on what we do today on your own. Let's say you wanna learn spanning tree or some other command, but we'll come, we'll come to that when the time comes. Okay, we need a templates folder. And what root, what level are these at? Mind maps. Oh, okay, I better do that. I better do it the same way. Or my paths won't work. Into mind maps. And then inside of mind maps, we're going to make a folder for our Jinja2 templates and a folder for our output which we will just call network. And then I guess we need a devices folder as well. Sure, let's do it that way. And because it's an empty folder, let's instantiate it with a git ignore file. All right, now let's write some code. Let's write some code. So inside of our mind map file, um, again, we're going to just, I, I'll explain after, but let's copy our Python import. So in Python, we can import other Python code, different libraries, and some of these we don't need um, necessarily, but we definitely need the PyATS. So we need operating system, time if we want to timestamp, JSON because we're dealing with JSON files. There's some different things that we may or may not need to import, but these definitely have to be imported and you'll see why. So PyATS, um, we wanna import the framework. This AE test is our outside framework that we're gonna to use to connect to that test bed. And then the topology lets us, you know, perform actions on the test bed. And then PyATS has this nice utility that will log our, our entire activity here. We're going to be using Jinja2 for templating, and I can explain this when the time comes. And then that general functionalities pi file that I made, we're actually going to import it and we're going to parse a learn function because we're going to learn a PyTS function from a reusable piece of code. Um, let me copy to here and I'll explain as we go. Let me maximize my screen and let me get rid of the terminal. Well, let me just 
minimize that. Okay, so um, the logging is just to log the script. Now this template directory says our template directory is in templates. And we can make an environment variable that will um, load the template file, the J2 file we're going to create inside of this templates folder. Now this is important, and um, I wish I had this memorized, I really do, but um, this is how PyATS, we create a class, another object, that is the common setup, and we invoke the AE test, right, from imported AE test up here, it's common setup. We then define a subsection, connect SSH to devices, passing in the test bed. Now that test bed file, again, is going to be the same test bed YAML file that we use to use the CLI command. And we say testbed.connect. And then, you know, once we've connected, we want to do things. So again, I, I don't have this memorized. I really wish I could just write this off the top of my head, but I find working code and let me go to here now. And we're going to say test case one, <coughs> um, learn routing, let's say. Actually, no, let's just say make mind map. I've changed my mind here. Make mind map. Now, again, we're making a different class here that we want to define parse. And we're going to have our test bed different sections and these steps that make up this test, right? So test takes parse and we pass these four um, methods along into the object. So then we get to say for device in testbed. Now, Andy, you had asked about, can everyone still hear me? I just should do a check. Am I going too fast? Is this an okay page? Uh, so now, uh... <clears throat> The bandwidth is just um, terrible. An issue. We can't see your screen most of the time. It's all pixelated. But but uh, here's, I had asked earlier, and I think we'll be fine as as long as it's clear on the um, okay, I'm you know, on your side on the Twitch stream or, or whatever it is. All right. As long as we can share this in a version that people will be able to see, we we can't <laughs> okay. see most of what you're doing. <laughs> I'm sorry, but, Andy. Uh, you know, I know. No, no, you don't. You don't have to be sorry. As, as long. I just wanted to have a video version of this to share, and as long as well, okay, you know, it'll right. be legible. All right, it, end, it we'll will. My my local recording is yeah, is, cool. is going to be great. Okay, I just want to. I apologize that this awesome. isn't didn't turn out so great, but um, so now no, it's it's great. I'm learning. All we're, right. we're we're doing stuff. It's all good. right. So let me. It's too bad that that's broken up. Okay, let me. Um, we're now we're at kind of the um, and we're using routing, right? So let me just. Okay, so this is sort of when we need to finish out that parse learn function. So um, I usually say if it's not, if it doesn't equal a switch, and we're going to leave that logic in our code here, because you know our test bed, our test bed has a field in the YAML that has type, right? And switches don't have routes; only routers have routes. So I say, you know, if the device.type does not equal switch, go ahead and learn or define a variable, let's say, called learn routes. And what we do is pass in the one command routing into our general functionalities file, which I'm going to show you now. Now the general functionalities file has this parse learn function class that we've written that will test and see if we can learn routing and if it doesn't learn it handle the error gracefully so let's say we hit a router and it's not configured for routes yet or some i don't know whatever the reason is if we can't learn routes handle it gracefully with an error message to the user in the logs otherwise give them the device.learn so PyETS lets you do things like device.parse or device.learn 
or device.command or device. right different objects in python will learn again with our cli command we said pi ts learn routing we can say device.learn and then inside of brackets say routing okay does that kind of track so far so then if we learn routes set up a variable as those routes so now we get into the business of how do we take right as of line 55 in the code this variable self.learn routes will have that json i showed you earlier it will all be stuffed in this variable but now we want to pass it into a jinja2 template that will let us manipulate it into a markdown structure. That's really all that's left for us to do here. Now, how do we do that? I'm going to, again, <laughs> copy some code here. And uh, so with steps, we want to say I've missed something here. Hang on, I have to define my... No, I think I've already done that. Where do I say where my template is? Um, sorry, I'm just scanning my code here. Here it is here. So... I'm sorry, I just I just about missed a step here. I'm a, I've gone over. Okay, let me maximize my screen here. So what we have to do is set up another variable that is the template, which, so there's the name of our Jinja2 template that we're going to use. So I have to make that file inside of the templates folder. And we'll come back to that. But this is how we make the connection between this variable holding the um, JSON and how we get that JSON into the Jinja2 template. So I also handle if it's not if it's none, hard code the variable to you know a dummy message that just says there are no static routes. And now this line of code here is how we actually um, and I think I'm done with that file. Question? Yes, yes, please. You're putting that into an environment variable to share between the two, right? Yes. That's correct. Yeah, yes. That's what I thought. Okay. I just wanted to double check. No, I'm glad you asked. I, I, I should have pointed that out. So now, okay, so um, that form, this variable on here um, that we've, it's it's the kind of the shell, right? Like you said, how we shared to the different environments. And now we get to, to pick what we pass into that um, variable. So what I say is dot render, and now I get to pick and choose what I pass into the Jinja2 template inside of the render method here. So what I'm going to pass in is the device alias, the device operating system, which come from the testbed file. And let's call it two parse routing. We could call it to mind map routing, whatever you want. But this is what we're going to vary, um, reference inside of the Jinja which is our learned static routing. And then we're going to make a file with the alias called mindmap and write this rendered version um, to the file. And this should all work, I believe. <laughs> and then I think what we do to just be graceful is disconnect from our device. So let's add one last step here that will disconnect from the devices so we don't leave the SSH session um, hanging once all of this work is done. But you don't have to do this, it will time out, but it's kind of a little graceful step. <clears throat> okay, I believe that code looks good. Now, 
we have the host name of the device, the device operating system, and the routes that we can make and do anything we want with inside of the mind map. Now this is where the part where we get to mind map comes in. And um, what I usually do is say, oh, hang on, I it shouldn't say static routing, it should just say routing here. And that should say no routes. <coughs> As long as it as long as it doesn't say, pardon me, one second. <coughs> Excuse me, just need some water. Well, oh. um, as long as the variable hey, hey, doesn't. Hey, John. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, good time for questions. Uh, I do have a question, and I, and I may have missed this because I joined a couple minutes late. The the data is coming in to JSON, and then you're passing it through the Jinja templates and then you're reading the Jinja two templates into the code. Is that did I get that right or am I backwards? No, that's correct. So we we connect to the device with the CLI. We parse the in this case learn routes, which gives us back structured JSON. And now I'm passing that JSON. I'm just at the step where I pass it into the Jinja two template to then output. You see here on line uh, 75 I'm saying with open and what I'm actually saving is the markdown file. So the Jinja 2 is like, I don't know, a proxy, a transformer, a manipulator. It doesn't do anything other than take my JSON and then manipulate it. See how what I'm writing is this variable, which is the rendered template. So give me the rendered output. Okay. And then save it to dot markdown. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and you okay. can do anything you. you want. If I wanted .html here, my Jinja template could just be HTML. If I wanted it as a CSV file, no problem. I could comma separate it and make it CSV. It, it really is your output file of choice. And Jinja 2 is kind of like... It lets, this is how I achieve configuration management at scale, by the way, is I feed in intent, right? These 100 switches should have these 10 VLANs template out VLAN 10 name blue into a config file and then push it out with Ansible or Python or whatever. If anyone's getting into DNA Center, by the way, um, Jinja 2 templates are the templates they use inside of DNA to create day zero and day n plus one templates. Um, so yeah. so oh, it, it's a, it's a, it's only, a only day n. <laughs> only day n, okay. Okay, Only so, day, yeah, no day zero. Day zero has to be config. So okay, it, that that actually leads me to another question. If you're if you're in mind, so so yeah, go just ahead. to make sure I understand the flow properly, because that's that's where it's breaking down in my head, right? So you're you're calling, you're using, and this is this is my lack of understanding of how Genta two works, but you're basically using it kind of to as a now you said transformer, or I guess as a filter, or kind of as a middleman in between. The raw output from the device and what you're writing to you're just kind of passing it through jinja 2 is that right yeah the best i here's the best analogy that i think i've made about jinja 2 now that i think about it um and ethan banks and i talk about it on packet pushers um think of it as like a, a snapchat filter or an instagram filter so like you want to look at the world in in fuchsia or black and white or old timey you put that setting on your phone and you point it at the world right so this sort of lets you say, I want to take that JSON data, but I want it as HTML, or I want it as Markdown, or I want it as CSV, or I want it in a different JSON structure, or whatever, right? It, it, it's sort of just the lens you pass the data through to then give you the different, you know, interpretation of the, the structured data. Is that is that a little better? Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Sean. Oh, no problem. No problem. So um, let's, I, I like to split the screen because I want to make sure I get this right. So what we're going to say is um, if um, so this is my key here, by the way, this two parse routing is really what I'm looking at now. So what I want to say is if two parse routing does not equal and what is my fail safe here? No routes. 
So if it doesn't equal no routes, go ahead and make a mind map. And um, this is how I typically write my code. And we're going to say, oh, sorry. Um, we need to look at the output now as well. And it's host name device. So I'm going to split the screen a third time just for a quick second here because I need this output. Um, so what we want to say is host name, and then we're going to call that inventory host name. And I'll stop there for a second. <coughs> so this is all we're doing, everyone. We're, we're making this is markdown format host name. And then I want to take the host name, which in this case is going to be the device alias and replace it when I save the markdown file. So our root of our mind map is going to say host name and then the device host name. And then we can do two pound symbols and say operating system. And we can say device underscore OS. And now here's where I'm done with this file because it's two parse routing right. All right, okay. So now here's typically, I like to collapse all of my, you can't see this maybe until I let my screen settle, but I'm gonna just collapse some things in the JSON that we have. Okay, so I know I need, okay, it's VRF. Let me go back to my, and we're gonna put that as the key here, VRF. Okay, good. Okay, so now I need a for loop. I definitely need a for loop for each VRF because when I collapse VRFs, there's three of them. And we're just going to continue to cascade through this output, basically making for loops and if statements um, to give away the secret, right? It's not that hard. So we're gonna say one, two, three, four, four, and let's call it VRF in to parse routing, right? Go ahead and make a subtree called VRF and put in the VRF. And then let's end the for loop. I think I should generate it from here. Let me just generate it from here. See if this runs, this code for now. Okay, just with VRFs and the operating system. So now I go back to my, um, terminal and uh, go into the mind maps folder and then I'm just going to take this command and try to run it and see what happens and let me bring this up so this is actually working everyone if you can see I think so um, it's trying to connect to the sandbox the PyETS framework and I'm using so much of my bandwidth right now. <laughs> this might take a couple of seconds. I hope it doesn't crash. Let's see here. No, it's connecting. It's giving the password. So anyone wondering what happens under the hood, I, it's just like running PuTTY. I, I've connected right now with SSH with the username. It's provided the password. And now you'll actually see the show commands it runs. And it's going to put all that data into the... Uh, it's going to just do what we said Pythonically, make the variable, pass it through Jinja2 template, and create the file. I hope. It's all running right now. And then what we'll look at is just what this look, what it looks like, you know, with just the VRFs mind mapped. And then I'll take some questions and we'll talk about the format a little bit. And then we'll look at adding in the, you know, the address families and the routes. And so it's just learn the routes. Oh, it has no attribute. Hang on. We have an error here. It has no attribute line 66. Okay, I'm not perfect. There is an error on line 66 of the code. Learned routing, learn routing. Learn, learn. Oh, because I called it learned routes. That's my mistake. Let me fix that. That's just a quick patch. That's just a misnamed variable. So let's run it again. It will just take a second, but we're close. We're very close. It's connecting and it's parsing the command. Um, but it, you know, I had a, an error in what I called the variable. 
uh, any questions or comments while this runs? It's going to take a minute. I don't think we're going to, we'll see what happens if this runs, but um, it, it's pretty straightforward there. Sorry, I have some family messages coming in. Let me. I just wish I should I could see your screen. John. <laughs> <laughs> I wish you were here. So with what, me, what was that I for know. loop that you? Uh, uh, what? So you said for verf, and then what did you do? Oh yeah. So um, so we're saying for verf, and then I'm saying make two pound symbols, vrf, and then the actual vrf variable. So this looks like it worked, everyone, and it's disconnecting from the devices. So now look at if I go, where's my output? Hmm, that's strange. It says it saved store data worked. Store data passed. Where did our file go? <laughs> I'm sorry. It, it There should be a file sitting here in this devices folder. Unless maybe I have the path wrong or something. Let me just take a quick look. Everything did work and we should have a file here. Network devices, device.alias underscore mind map. Maybe because the parent folder wasn't created or something. Hmm. I'm just going to try it again. Um, it did, it did seem to work. So let me just see, let me try it again. It seemed to be a problem with my output path. But we didn't get any errors. It successfully completed the job. And you see this nice, um, I'll put a screenshot of it. Whoops, I missed it. Hang on. I'll put it in the chat for the happy hour chat. This is what a, a, a successful Pi ETS um, Roddy's there making fun of my internet connection. Oh my goodness. Uh, I just catching up with the happy hour chat and he's in here making fun of me. Okay, great. It's this now I feel like home. Roddy's here. Um, <laughs> I put the, uh, in the chat, in the happy hour channel, um, the logging that we included earlier gives you that wonderful recap of your Pi ETS job and what failed and what line it failed on. It's extremely easy to use. I just don't know why I'm not getting output files. Device alias. Is it because the device alias is... You know why? It's because I have a dot in the device alias. Ha. Okay. I believe that's our problem is that it can't make a file with a dot in the alias that's the output file name I'm using. Well, you learn something every day, right? I think that's our problem is it's trying to make a dot file and that's not going to work. Maybe, I don't know. It's all working. I just don't know why we're not getting the output file. Network devices, alias mind map, write the parsed output and close the file. Yeah, I think it was the decimal inside of the file name. So then, Andy, what I can do is um, after, after this stage, hmm, how does that work? I don't know how you pull my fork into your code. You can... Um, did that do it? No. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> I'm under the pressure here. I can't seem to get the file to output to work. Am I in the right path here? Network devices, network devices. And then device alias mind map. It says it stored the data, so that's step passed. 
store data with open network devices, network devices, find that. change the path and write it right here. I'm sorry everybody, I, I'm just having trouble getting the file to write. No worries whatsoever. It's all working, the hardest part's behind us. <laughs> now it, it's literally just getting the, the MD file to write. So I've tried to change the path just to be the root uh, folder and let's see if this works here. And then what I can do is uh, hopefully take a picture of this and um, show you the uh, so this is what the Jinja 2 looks like let me put that in the chat since not everyone can see the screenshot of what the Jinja looks like happy hour this is what the Jinja 2 looks like and yes Roddy we can yes we can do this with Ansible Ansible is actually very easy to do this, by the way, if um, maybe the Python stuff is a little intimidating um, with something like, no, I still don't have the file. Is it the alien? Um, what was I saying about Ansible? So. Ansible actually is pretty, so I, this is why I haven't completely dismissed Ansible. If you use something like iOS Facts or NXOS Facts or a module called Setup, you can even point the Setup module against Windows Compute or Linux Compute. There's VMware Info Modules. There's Azure AWS. If you want to get started with what I'm showing you, you can use Ansible and these Info Modules and they basically do what I'm showing you. They go to the command line or to a REST API and they give you back structured JSON. Um, but you can get it back about from a Windows server or from ICE or from Prime or there's all kinds of modules. Is this going to make a fool out of me? Come on and save the, where's the data? Something is not uh, quite... What am I missing here? If it's not none, make the file. Oh, haha. Ha. Oh boy. Yeah, it's when in doubt, really double check your code. I think I'm nested too deep there on my if statement. Yeah. Haha. Ha. Okay. Let's try one more time. That's the pressure of live coding. So Andy, uh, Python and spacing and nesting, <laughs> it's what always gets me. So you can't see my screen, but I have this if it's none statement to try to catch if, if there was a problem or there's no routes. Well, I had the rest of my code nested too far inside of it. So um, it was treating... It wasn't actually running the rest of the code, which included the step where I make the file. So let me see if I make the file on this run, and then I can get back to sharing what the uh, markdown looks like. How did you find the error in your code? Did it spit out telling you what line it was on? I missed that part. Well, actually, there was no error. The code was doing what I told it uh. to do. There's my file. Huh. It's just that... It was literally okay. doing what I told it to do, which was um, incorrect, <laughs> right? Like, so so I actually had to yeah. look at the code a little closer. Now I have the file. All right, now check this out. Check this out. This is a very, very good demonstration. So if you go to the chat room and look at the Jinja template, this is what we get from that Jinja template when, when we feed the network data to it. So you see how we have three VRFs, test management default. 
if you hop in the happy hour chat room, the Jinja template is what generated that. Now let's just take a look at it by turning on the mark map. And, and I'll show you what that looks like. And this is what we get in the mark map so version. So what generated that pretty mind map? So the pretty version is all the VS Code extension. I don't do anything. All I do is click a little uh. a little button in VS Code that says. Um, so Andy, if you install Mark Map as a VS Code extension and literally just make that Markdown file that I show you by hand, and then turn on the preview, you'll see. So mm. now, now we just literally add the layers, right? So the next layer is going to be. What was it? Address family? Yeah. So, so, so some of these have both V4 and V6. So we need to handle a, another loop. So let me, um, let me go in and make the loop. So we're done with the Python, everybody. We know the Python works. We know we're feeding the JSON into the Jinja. So now it's just a matter of templating the rest of the, um, JSON. So now I'm going to make another for loop, right? We just keep going now and we say for address family in, and now we have to say two parse routing square bracket VRF dot address family. <clears throat> now I'm going to paste this in because this is important. Um, What, I'm, what, what we have to do if we want to do nested loops is reference the singular object from our inner loop. Meaning, if you look at the code I just pasted, we have to say for address family in and then the full string to parse routing the square bracket VRF, meaning you know, I just posted there's three VRFs. So the first time through, it's going to be test dot address family. The second time through, it's going to be management dot address family, right? Because test and management might have different address families. So we just continue our nesting down the chain. And so now we have to handle address families, right? So we're going to say, um, Hmm. I'm trying to see how many levels. We only have six levels. So that's one, two. Yeah, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Address family. So John, I'm just I'm just wondering, the JSON file, what does it actually do? Is that passing the data to the Python code? So the JSON is all, all it is, is the parsed, meaning like, PyETS is using regex to take standard output and give you back JSON. It's not really an active participant. It's just the structure of the, the network state data that we are then using and working with in Python. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah. So you're basically using it like a, a variable placeholder and, it, and it's going straight yeah. into your into your code. Yeah, I'm taking that JSON and it's in a variable awesome. and then I pass that variable. So you see, you might not be able to see it, but the hmm. if you see two parse routing. Yeah, it's a bit blurry. Yeah, two parse mm -hmm. routing is like the full blob of JSON. Mm -hmm. And then we can say like dot address sure. family or dot route or whatever for the specific keys that we want. So let's go down another right, layer okay. to address okay, family and let me just save it. There's no harm in me saving it and running it again. And now we're going to have address families tied to VRFs by adding another for loop layer. Hey, and I'm, I'm, I really appreciate everybody's joining today. I, I know the video isn't great, but, but I'm, I'll post this overnight tonight. I just want to thank you for joining uh, Andy and I, we've been talking about this for a while and, uh, I, I really like the company. I, I need to keep busy these days. So this is, I appreciate everyone joining today. Yeah, thank you, John. This is awesome. Oh, I'm Looking forward to seeing the, uh, <laughs> yeah.
It's good stuff. Well, there's two. We're, I wish I had a high speed connection for many reasons because I have to sit and wait for the Pi ETS job to run. But I like adding them layer at a time, and and hopefully you're hopefully it will open up in your mind as we go because I'm going to paste the screenshots in that how this is all tiered. So literally, my next level is going to be three pound symbols or three ampersands under the two ampersands VRF, which mind map then says, oh, the address families are a leaf node off of the VRF because of the three pound symbols. And then we just keep nesting down until we get to next tops and things like that. Um, and this can be as simple as something like NTP or licenses where there's like two keys or four keys. OSPF had 75 keys or something. So this can be very, very complicated stuff. But generally speaking, it's a pretty easy little exercise. Let me show you the address families, for example, now. All right, so we've added in address families. And this is what it renders like. Let me put it right in the chat here. So now we can see easily, right? Oh, DR, um, you know, test and management only have address family V4, but the default VRF has V4 and V6. If I was the administrator at this organization, I would probably put a change ticket in, right? Shut off V6 in the default routes if we're not using V6, right? Uh, just visually looking at the mind map, right? Okay, so let's go and add the next layer. So we've done address families. Now we're into routes. So again, we just now we add four layers and another wrapper of if statements or four statements. So we're going to say for route in. And again, we have to get the singular address family now inside of the square brackets. So it's going to be the full string for route in. And then we get to the singular address family dot routes. And let's go ahead and add route. Route. And then we close off the for loop. And we save that file and we run it again. Now, this is when it gets really exciting when we get into what routes does test have for address family four? What routes does default have for six and four? Just take a second, it's running now. And I'll take another screenshot and put it inside of the uh, inside of the chat room. Um, if I'm not sure if anyone, I'm gonna put this out there. If anyone has any children um, that are around the age that, that they may be interested in Python programming, I have an open source repo called Python Pokemon Postman and a video that goes along with it that you can show your kids how to make web pages for their favorite Pokemon using this technique. So they type in Pikachu and I, gen I go get the Pokemon data from the API and I make an HTML page for that Pokemon for the kids. And I have a video on how you can follow along using this exact same technique, by the way. Okay, so now we have our routes. Just wait till you see this, everybody. Now it gets really good. Now we get some real data in here. Okay, go ahead and check the happy hour chat channel room and take a look at the routing information that we have. It's, it's just posting now. There we go. Take, take a look at that. Now we actually have a real mind map and we can see the two V6 routes, the four or five routes for address family four, right? Isn't, is that not incredible? It's so, magical. Sorry, I'm getting really excited here. If you want to do this in your own browser without generating <laughs> the code, here's the raw text. Just, just copy and paste that. Raw John, text. did you, did you create this? N no, no, I, I found, I, it's a longer story. I, I was doing CSV files this way for my company. And then, I, and then I, I started doing markdown files because we started to use, um, not GitHub, but 
Azure DevOps and TFS, which I could put readme files up in Markdown. And then just Googling and fucking around on the internet, I found, uh, pardon my language, I found um, this mark map utility. So then I started making mind maps. I, I've been doing this a long time, but but I'm not the author of the Markdown or the, the mind map tool. No, I, I'd love to get in touch with them and show them what I've done with their tool. But no, I, I, I just, you know, I feel like the... <laughs> Behind the green curtain, right? The Wizard of Oz kind of thing. I, I, it's all smoke and mirrors, Andy. I, I figured out that I could get network state and make a markdown file and that this tool made it look really pretty. But if you copy that text I've pasted hey, John, in the chat, a... and, and like honestly, just highlight all that text, make an MD file in VS Code, and then look at it in the mind map preview, you can see sort of what I'm talking about. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, let's take some more questions. Hey, John, I was wondering um, if you're going to do like a comparison, maybe before or after a, uh, a change you're doing at night, what would be the best way you think to do that? Just do a git diff or a diff on the uh, on the mind map? Yeah, uh, we didn't coordinate this response or this question, but I do want you're you're thinking way ahead here. Everybody remember, this is a plain text markdown file, which can be put in a Git repo. Meaning, I, I make, I'm make i adding an OSPF route. I'm removing a route. I, I want to see what the routing table looked like today versus yesterday. You could run this every hour or whatever you want and use Git lens. So have you used Git lens in VS Code? I would apply a Git lens over today and yesterday's routes, meaning show me yesterday's MD file and today's MD file, and then Git Lens would actually highlight in red code that's been removed, meaning routes that have been lost, or highlighted in green, showing you routes that have been added. I would call that Git Ops, and this is a very handy way to, to use this tool is along with Git. Great, great question, yeah. Does anybody else want to say anything or have any questions or points they want to make? Okay. Um, I mean, I, mean, I could see how this would be easily be used for a, um, a visual of, say, you know, you have a route leaking somewhere in a VRF that's not supposed to be there. You could just look at that and say, oh, that route's not supposed to be there. Remove it, make the change. Oh, it's. I, I agree with you. Or even just, um, like, I, I don't know about turnover and in, in your organization, but... It feels like every few weeks I'm having to sit down and give someone a fire hose blast of what my network looks like or what routes are there or what VRFs we have. Now I just, I say, you know, clone this repo and right look at it through MarkMap and let me know if you have any questions. I don't need to give them an RSA token. They don't have to have access to the CLI. They can just happily consume, you know, what, what the network topology looks like, right? So I, I agree with you. I think it's great. Um, I'm just going to add another layer and I'll, and I'll show you it, it. We're just getting started. Wait until we have the outgoing interface on this map or the next top. Like this is truly like, just wait, we're just getting going here. So we got to routes. So now I have a bunch of other keys. And is this all... Sorry, I'm just trying to see if it's all normalized data. It looks normalized. Let me try this. All right, so our next leaf would be the next hop, but there's some things at the route level that we're going to add under the route, such as if it's active or not. So let me add that in here. And this will just take me a second to, to punch in the code. And um, route.active. And then there's the metric. I, I honestly wish I had all of these utilities when I was teaching in, in college. Um, from VS Code to Git Lens to Mind Maps and Markdown. I, I really wish I had to <laughs> I had these tools to um, you know to teach people. It, it's it's a visual learning is uh, you know, it's really underrated. So that's the route preference. And then we have the source protocol. 
This is also great. Where did this route come from? You're not searching for an S or an O or IE2 or whatever. It's right in the mind map, the source of the route for the real routing protocol nerds in the call. It will actually get down into the level of where it learned the route. So then next hop would be All right, I'm just gonna make a quick adjustment because I've run out of spacing and I'll paste the final version. I'll show you what I mean. So Markdown, you only have six levels of um, headers, meaning like six ampersands deep is as far as you can go and then it will stop rendering. So you have to kind of be a little tricky sometimes, a little creative, let's say, with how, <laughs> how you display things. So I'm just gonna collapse VRF and address family onto the same layer to give myself one more layer of headers. And you'll see, you'll see why when I'm done here. It's it's not a big deal. Um, and then we're going to say next hop, right? And that's got to be inside of its own for loop. One, two, three, four, four. Next hop. In. We're really close to having this um, another layer rendered. I just need a second here. So it's under the route. Next hop dot next hop list. We're looking at next hop here. I'm sorry, uh, next hop. Hey, John. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I'm sorry. I have to drop. I have an unsupervised puppy using my house as a toilet right now. Okay, yeah. No <laughs> I just problem, went out and Andy. checked, and it's a mess. So, I'm 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 sorry to invite you on and then have to run, but. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, no puppies, problem. I'll, I'll get the puppies recording. making a mess. I'll get the recording up overnight, Annie. I'm really about just about yeah. done here. So what? Well, yeah. What well, What I'd like to do is either follow the recording and try to follow along at home. Okay. Maybe I'll bother you with some questions. No, um, no I, I'd like to try to get some of this working in my home lab. Okay. So whether that's a separate session with you and I, or if I just try it on my own following this video and bother you with questions, but I, I really thank you, John, and I'm gonna go clean up a mess, sorry. <laughs> no problem, good luck with the puppy. Thanks, happy new year if I don't talk to you. Yeah, thanks again, you too. And uh, it, it, feel free to, to drop or stay everybody else. We are really close to being done here. There's only a few more keys to to work out. Um, just, just let me, I'm really close. Um, and this is active. I am really close. I'm sorry. I, I am still here. I'm just puzzling out a little bit of logic. <laughs> I wish you could see this, but it will be done and I will have the final. Uh, let me try to render this, everybody. And I have to fin end that for loop or close that for loop. And let me run this and then I'll show you the final rendering. All right. So this is what I have landed on for the final structure of this routing mind map. That uh, meaning the ginger template. Hey, John, I have another question for you. Yeah, fire away. <laughs> so does this only capture 
routes that are existing in the routing table as is? Like, would it also capture maybe floating static routes that you might have? Um, it, <clears throat> I believe it is whatever is in the output of the show IP. Let me let me see what the command is. I had the command somewhere. They, it's it's this is parsing or whatever would be in the result of the show. Um, I guess it's show IP or show IP route VRF all maybe some command like that. Um, now, okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is there's like, you could run learn static underscore routing, which will filter out only the static routes or, um, learn OSPF, which will give you more than just the routing table. It gives you all kinds of OSPF related data. There's learn BGP, um, spanning tree, dot one X, all kinds of great stuff. Or you could say, look, I really want, like Danny Wade wanted show license summary. So he wrote his own parser and contributed it because PyETS is open source. So he was actually able to, oh, wow. All right, so this is really nice. I said, oh, wow, because, um, okay, here's what the final mind map looks like. I'll see if I how much of it I can get on the screen. So this goes down to the outgoing interface and the next hop. Am I missing anything? Does that look right to does everybody here? Let me post it in here. And let me try to zoom in and collapse some of these. Maybe get more on one more. Let me just let me map out one route, let's say. With two hops. Yeah, here let me do that. So here is what a single route with two next hops looks like. Yeah. And um, that's that pretty much wraps it up, everybody. Um, there, there's no more code to write. I'll, um, later on today, I'll push all of this up into this repo, and the code will be available for you on GitHub. Um, I can stop sharing since it's not doing any good. <laughs> um, yeah, let me stop sharing my screen and we can just have a chat and finish up. Uh, stop streaming. Okay, so that uh, that's basically what how it all works. Uh, again, from the high level, we use a parser or if you have natural JSON from a REST API, ICE, Prime, ACI, DNA, Pokemon API, whatever it is, Right? If you have that structured JSON, get it into a variable, pass the variable into Jinja2, structure it in any way you want with simple for loops and if statements, save it as markdown, CSV, HTML, whatever, and ideally markdown in this case, then use the markdown utility to see it as a mind map. Um, I, I, I have, there's quite a few commands and parsers left to do. I'm working on routing right now that will be part of the, the overall open source project. But I, I'm always looking for diversions. If you have your own API and you want to try something like this, I am happy to help. Uh, I'm always looking for things to work on and diversions. So <laughs> let me know. And thanks for your time today. Is, yeah. Does anybody have any questions or anything? Um, John, yeah, just a quick question. Um, I was wondering... Can you use a YAML file um, instead of JSON for the to make the to make the code basically more reusable? Um, I don't see why not. Right, you could use YAML dot load mm -hmm. or load yeah. string, and then you have. So I guess the key is structured data, right? So yes, you could load oh. string a YAML into the variable instead of the JSON. And then yep. Jin, Jinja2 respects YAML to loop over that just as, you know, um, like JSON. So let's say if you had a Helm file or a playbook or something, you, you could probably make a markdown file out of that and mind map your Kubernetes or your Ansible world, right? That's a, it's a good question. It's not, it's not limited to, you could do it with XML, right? With, dic do, yeah. with yeah. dictionary to, to, or dict to string or whatever. Um, or XML to, you could convert the XML to JSON and then 
pass it in or just deal with the raw XML. Yeah, the key is that it's structured, yeah. So we can basically load the PyAML module and um, just import that and just use YAML instead of the JSON, basically. I, I believe so. I, I don't see any reason why not. Um, awesome. Like in theory, I could I could mind map the test bed that I'm mm -hmm. using as my test bed for the PyETS to mind map the other files. If you want another level of inception, <laughs> you could mind map your <laughs> test bed YAML file. I, I don't see why not. Wow. Awesome. That is awesome. And and I'm assuming the whole point of the um, serialization language like YAML and JSON is just to make it more reusable, basically. Well, yeah, I, I think that JSON goes hand in hand with Python. It, it, it's like the yeah. natural language it wants to work with. It's machine Absolutely. readable and human readable. Um, the only, here's, here's the comment on JSON. Mm -hmm. Um, because I also template JSON files for different types of visualizations. Like um, there's a D3 library where you can make different a different mind map sort of system with, with JSON files instead of markdown files. But JSON wow. has things like the last key set doesn't have a comma, whereas every other key set has a comma. So now you have to track your loop and say, you know, if I'm on my, if it's, if it's the last iteration of the loop, put a, don't put a comma, otherwise put a comma in. So Jinja templating, it's more about what you're templating. Markdown is as easy as it gets. But if you're trying to template out YAML or template out Jinja or JSON, excuse me, um, you know, commas and spacing and all that stuff, it really, it, it matters. The other comment on that is like if you're templating an iOS config file and you're trying to achieve item potency, you have to have the same number of spaces in the YAML or the config file you generate as on the running iOS config or Ansible will not treat them as item potent. So when you're templating wow. iOS configs, let's say VLAN name blue. Well, name blue has to be preceded by two spaces because in iOS, at the command line, there's two spaces before name, the name of a VLAN. And if the, the, the config you generate from Jinja is all flat and there's no spaces, Ansible, being Ansible, will say, oh. these things don't match, they're not item potent, even though the only thing that's different is the spacing. <laughs> right? Yeah, we'll throw it out. Yeah, we'll yeah. throw it out, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so... Anyway, yeah. uh, today was a lot of fun, everybody. I, I don't want to keep everyone here forever. If, if there's any other questions or if, um, you know, just let me know. Hey, hey John, you got a second for a, a mind map specific question, yeah. uh, an alternate take on it. So I like how you're doing the, like, basically the layer three, the, the routing mapping. Have you put any thought into, or and, and this is just what's kicking around in my head. I struggle with layer one mapping and layer one representation and i'm coming up with a way to say okay well here's how my stuff is supposed to be connected but to visualize that needs to be a visio diagram that needs to be constantly updated do you think there might be worth if i can come up with a a state or a state database more or less of here's how my stuff's supposed to be connected that the mind mapping processes that you're using here might be translatable into layer one diagrams? Yeah, layer one is a challenge. I mean, we, we have, um, like, I don't know if there is um, the, the wire testing, you know, TLDR or whatever. I don't think it has a, a parser per se, but you can certainly, so here, let me, ba let me take a step back. Um, if, if you look at the mind maps that I've done, I've tried to base it on CDP and LLDP, which is about right. as good as you can get. Meaning at an access layer, this mind map will show you everything from a phone to a wireless access point to an IP camera. In the data center, you have things like VMware that is CDP aware, or even NXOS does its best to give you a MAC address if it doesn't have CDP or LLDP. Yep. So yes, I, I agree. And you have six layers, right? So you can kind of say layer one is going to be my host name of the device. Layer two is going to be interfaces. 
Layer three could be MAC address. Is it up or is it down? What's the port description? Um, what's the CDP information? Right? You could just... And, and the thing is, today's demo did one parser. If there were, right. say, six parsers that you wanted to co combine together, well, it's just feeding six variables of data into the Jinja 2 and then arranging it as such, right? So... You, you have some CDP information, some LLDP information, maybe the results of Nmap in Python or a ping test or, right, you can use your imagination as long as you have structured data to feed the templating engine mm -hmm. and, and, and a, you know, six levels of depth in Markdown. I don't see why not. We, we, we tried to do, um, like this utility, if you had a, a test bed of, and I've done this in my real production environment, I have a core with 45 buildings connected to it. And then downstream, there could be anywhere from three to 15 floors of access switches. And then downstream from them, you know, 3,000 wireless access points and probably 2,000 phones, probably 2,000 IP cameras. We have right. that all mind map now that you can collapse right from the core down to a building, to a floor, to what's connected on that floor all from CDP and it's in Git. And I can see that why did I lose a floor overnight or what happened to my 30 access points on this building yesterday? Because I have the Git differential data, right? Yeah. No, it's, I'm excited about getting the, the idea out there it, and it's, it doesn't get any easier, right? It's, it's JSON to Markdown, <laughs> JSON to Markdown. That's it. VS code literally does, all of the other heavy lifting for us in this in this use case, right? So, right. Huh. Okay. I'll have to keep playing around and see if I can make it work. Because in in my mind, what I'd like to be able to do is use a a documentation tool like Netbox, right? And say, okay, here's what my layer one connectivity is supposed to look like. Here's my source of truth for that. Can I one map it? so that I don't have to keep maintaining Visio diagrams? And then two, can I detect a variance and trigger on that variance? Like, oh no, right. this the uplink's supposed to be on this port, not that port. And maybe use something like CDP to say, well, you're supposed to be detecting this switch here, not there. So, and just yeah, I don't mean to cut out. you off. I don't want to forget. There's, there's two points. You have to talk to Jeremy Schulman. I don't know if you know Jeremy. He's re just released, like just this week, His he calls it NetCam or NetCAD. It's It's computer-aided network design where you put in a spreadsheet to say these ports are 10 gig LR, this port's 10 gig short range, these ports are copper, this is the VLAN they're supposed to be on. You build your intent and then this NetCam he has will do what you're suggesting. It will go out and find and validate your network against state. So talk to Jeremy. The other thing is, if you have NetBox, I would suggest you don't even mess around with mind mapping CDP. Find the good REST APIs that NetBox has and mind mm -hmm. map the JSON the NetBox will give you. Right? Because okay. you, you could do an yeah. HTTP GET against NetBox's REST API and use the JSON NetBox gives you. And then you could say NetBox to mind map, right? Mm, yeah. Yeah. I wish I had a netbox. My company doesn't use it. And, I, and it's really hard for me to do it at home without a real environment. But um, I think mind mapping netbox APIs would be very interesting, right? Yeah. That, and that's that's sort of what I want to get to is if I can make it easier for my engineers to input the data like the reason the visio diagrams don't get updated is because you got to find where they live you gotta oh it's a mess yeah yeah it's a mess but if in netbox they can just say well this interface is connected to this interface and then i can visualize that now my diagrams are sort of generated on the fly and updated on the fly more more importantly yeah 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 well I, i'm glad you're thinking about it and if if you do have you know even if you if you have a netbox and send me a blob of um, obfuscated JSON, let's say, just privately, 
I could take a stab at, at a template for you in the mind map and the code or whatever. I just don't have one. That's all. Yeah, um, I can. Um, Boff girl, you yeah. you were gonna say something. Sorry, I saw you come off mute there. I gotta get going myself in a couple minutes. I just want to give everybody a chance. Maybe she's back on mute. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, so Jordan, great questions. And yeah, if you find me a blob of a netbox JSON, I could I could certainly kind of point you in the right direction. And it's so great to see uh, everybody here today. And um, and I'll over I'll upload this overnight so that we don't lose the recording. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks for your time, John.